Hey YouTube, Mark Kaufman here, and today I am uh, going to be talking about where I started and how far I've come in regards to my knife collecting. Now, I originally was just going to talk about the knives that I've owned, what I bought, what I sold, but I've decided to make this an open tag. So this is going to be an open tag video and all you have to do if you have it is have your very first knife and then, and this is not in order here, but you could put your very first knife and then your most recent knife here. Um, I know that there are guys out there that have like 500 knives and I mean, I'm just saying just put out what you can and talk about the process in which and how you got to where you are. Um, I think this would be a very cool and a very interesting open tag. So I'm going to talk about where I started in regards to knife collecting and what knives I had first, which these are the three that I really owned first and really remember having first as my first knives. And then my f uh, first, well, two, uh, well, three serious knives I started owning actually are not here anymore because I sold them. So first off, uh, without further ado, it is my daughter's birthday and she's already asleep, but she turned two years old. So woohoo! So my daughter's birthday was today. So June 18th. So that is pretty awesome. I think that's pretty cool that she is two and she is the smartest little girl in the world. So cheers to her. Okay, so let me get started here. Uh, the first time I tried to film this video, it went for 35 minutes, and I told myself, Heck no, I'm not going to do that to you guys. So, the very first knife I actually really remember getting and owning was this real steel Choctaw. Now, this is a knife made by Frost Cutlery, and this knife I actually bought not this exact one, but this was the exact knife. I actually found another one. Um, this knife I bought before I went on a scouting trip. And my dad said you could buy whatever knife you wanted out of this case. And what obviously stood out to me, being about six or seven years old, was this blue handle. So for me, I grabbed that blue handle and I said, you know what, this is the one. Especially in a smaller kid's hands, this actually feels like a big knife. Um, in my hands, this is a three-fingered grip, but you can also choke up here, and this would actually be a very decent carry today, but I just don't carry this one. I keep this on my bookshelf in this position, and it is a constant reminder of where I started. So that is my first knife. And then my dad went on a business trip and brought back this Victorinox Fireman. Now the Fireman has a large blade and then has a serrated blade that I have completely butchered. Um, I do remember a few of the things that I tried cutting with this when I was younger and it didn't work. So I am thinking about refurbishing these uh, blades here, but that may be another video in the future, and you can see on the back here how bad that is. So I really beat on my knives when I was a kid. So you have that serrated blade, and then you have your opening layer, can opener, cap lifter, and when I was in the Scouts, I actually took this with me, and it was very useful. So, and then you also have the saw. And then on the back, you have a reamer, and you have the corkscrew. Now for me, I used this thing all the time and I said to myself, you know what, that's pretty useful, that isn't. Um, let me get this knife here. And I bought this one, this exact one, when I was, I want to say, a sophomore in junior high. And then I carried this all the way through to, I think my sophomore or freshman year of college. So this blade has a little bit of a story, but when it was closed, uh, the point would stick out and I had to grind down the tip so it wouldn't stick out and cut my pant hole, uh, the pant pocket and put a hole in it. So there was that and I have used this blade quite a bit. You can see it's starting to curve there. But this thing 
I carried on my keys for the longest time and I used most of all, surprisingly, when I was younger, um, I'm still young, I'm not even 30 yet, but the, the cap lifter and screwdriver. Now, this screwdriver was very useful because I used this to tighten the trucks on my uh, skateboard. So sometimes the trucks would get loose on my skateboard and I'd use that. Or if it didn't fit, I would use the Phillips head for that and tighten on the trucks. So that was one of the tools that I used quite a bit. But it wasn't until then, uh, a few years ago, that I actually decided to polish this and refurbish it. One a few years ago, it was probably about eight, nine months ago. So I ended up polishing the scales and I put this one away. So then after that, um, I got, let me blow my nose really quick. <sighs> ah, so sorry, allergies are rampant. Um, so after that, I bought myself a Spyderco Tenacious. Now the Spyderco Tenacious is a classic um, and this was back when they were like $30, $35. So I bought one of those and I loved it. Um, if I had known they had this out there, I would have bought an Endura. But for me, I bought a Spyderco Tenacious and beat the living heck out of it. Um, I actually did a lot of things you shouldn't probably do with that knife. And I even ground down the tip of that knife to be able to open up Sunto watch case backs because you need a nickel or something to open that. And at that time, I was working as a watchmaker's apprentice. And... I used that to open up the case backs. Now, of course, I couldn't really pierce anything at that point, but it was more useful to me to open up those case backs than anything else. So I bought a Spyderco, and at that time, I wasn't really dating a girl at all, so I had a little bit of extra money and extra cash. So I ended up buying myself, and you're probably gonna say, wow, that's a really good first real knife. Um, I bought myself a Benchmade Lurch. So the Benchmade Lurch is actually a very unique knife and it resembles, and I'll put a picture of it up there and I've probably already put a tenacious picture right there, but um, it resembles the blur from Kershaw quite a bit. When you look at it and you see the handle shape, the shape of the blade and everything, you probably think Kershaw Blur. They probably wanted to get a little bit of that assisted action money because that knife was a thumb stud assist frame lock titanium knife and it had S30 uh, uh, S30V steel and for me personally I thought that knife was fantastic and I really liked the the assist opening on it and the titanium was pretty cool didn't really I heard titanium handle and I was like wow that's got to be a really good knife so I bought it yeah, $200 knife when you're, how old was I? I think I was maybe 16, 17 years old. That's that's quite a buy. So after that knife, I, um, I ended up anodizing it, messing with it, but could never get it sharp. I mean, and at that time, I didn't really know what a sharpening stone was. I used the diamond rods and stuff, and I just couldn't get it sharp. So I ended up selling it. And then guess what my next big knife was? My next buy. It was the Zero Tolerance 0560. <laughs> I mean, you go from one good knife to another really good knife, and I'm telling you, that was quite the jump. That knife was fantastic. I had the LMAX steel model, and um, this is what the ZT0560 looks like, and that knife is actually a Rick Hinderer design. Now, that knife has a titanium frame lock, G10 side scale, and I have to say, that thing was fantastic. The only thing I didn't really like about it was the flipper tab. Because the flipper tab ran right into the jimping, and that thing tore up my fingers. And I just, after about eight months of carrying it, I kept using the thumb stud, and that's probably why I prefer thumb stud opening knives mostly. Yeah, I can probably say that knife has left some uh, deep scars. Not literally, but just uh, mentally. And um, 
I would have to say, yeah, that knife um, was sold off. And after that, I just didn't really want to get an expensive knife. So I bought myself a Bear Grylls lockback. Now at that time, I was getting back into watching Man vs. Wild, and I really enjoyed that show, enjoyed Bear Grylls, so I bought one of his knives from Gergeber. And to be honest, I had no problems with that. That knife was a really, really cool little knife. Um, the steel wasn't that great, but honestly, I mean, I didn't really know how to sharpen it, so I just kept using it, kept using it, and used my uh, parents' sharpening steel out of the kitchen. And to be honest, that sharpening steel on that cheap steel did a fine job, actually worked. So after that Gerber, I ended up going back to Swiss Army Knives, and I think I went back to this one and started carrying that one again and threw it back on my keys. And it wasn't until I was probably, I think a senior, no, probably a freshman going into freshman year of college, that I started getting back into knives. And then after that, it was my sophomore and junior year of college and I was seriously into knives. And then when I graduated college at that point, I was, I had quite the collection. I think I had over 200 different knives and I'll probably throw some Instagram photos from my Instagram going way back and um, show you a few of the knives that I actually had. Um, I had a Reich knife that was fantastic. I had the, the Spyderco a uh, copper scaled paramilitary two with Rex 45 steel. I mean, that thing was fantastic. And um, then I had a few other really great knives. I had a custom knife factory knife, a few giant mouse knives. Um, I, I had quite the collection. And I have to say that collection probably could have bought me maybe uh, 10 or 20 of these right here, probably, maybe. Um, but then, um, my girlfriend and I, we got engaged and then we got married and when you're married, you want to get a house. And so I decided, okay, if I'm going to get a house, how are we going to do this down payment? Cause she had a good down payment. I didn't. So I looked at all my knives and I said, sayonara, <laughs> the, the choices we make for the love in our life. Um, so I sold off quite a few of my knives and that really hurt, but I kept a few and one that I wish I had kept was that Spyderco Paramilitary, uh, Paramilitary 2 with the copper scales. Um, it was actually copper handles. There were no scales. It was just the handles were copper. So sold off a bunch and then just recently about a year a year ago or so um, after we got our house um, about a year and a half ago I started getting back into knives and I really got back into knives and then it wasn't until about four maybe two or three months ago I made a pretty big purchase which was not this one it was actually this one and I said to myself look I'm going to buy myself a Chris Reeve knife and at that time, this one was $375. And I thought to myself, okay, that's quite a bit of change, but I want it. So I bought it. And then I said to myself, okay, you've bought the Chris Reeve. You really like it. But the one you really need to get and you really need to own is the 31. So I did a few watchmaking jobs um, and I put that money away and bought the 31 didn't really hurt us because oh, excuse me um, didn't really hurt us because I have a full-time job and then my side job is to take in jobs um, and work at home so that's a little bit of play money and then also the YouTube ads really help out and also you hitting that like button really helps also so um, that enabled me to get a knife that I've always dreamed to own and so after getting this, I was so impressed, so happy with it that I decided to buy 
a small 31, but with the micarta scales. And after I bought this, I said to myself, you know what? I think I have my Chris Reef fill. Uh, the Chris Reef fill is basically my small and cozy, small 31 with micarta, and then the large 31. I think you're getting a good mix here. You're getting a really good mix of, you've got a nice large Chris Reef knife. Then you also have a very unique styled Chris Reef knife that's very comfortable in the hand, but small and compact. And then on a little bit of a bigger size than the small, um, compact and cozy, you're going to have the small 31, which if, if you can see that, it is just a little bit bigger than the Nkosi. So for me, I usually carry the Nkosi as kind of like, I don't really want to carry a knife, but if I'm going to do something tough and difficult and really hard working, I've got a knife that's got that covered. And then I have the 31 where I'm like, I don't really want to carry an, a, a large blade, but I want to have a three inch knife that can do some chores, can do some heavy work. And then we have this uh, large that's going to be basically the worker. Okay, now that's not to say that all of these can't be workers. Um, I have the Lion Steel Mito, and this one actually came before the the um, Small and Cozy. And when I bought this, I I said to myself, okay, you bought this, and at this time, I think this was about a two hundred and sixty-five dollar knife. Um, I thought to myself, this was this was a pretty big purchase, and I was so happy with this titanium frame lock knife from Lion Steel that I said to myself, you know what? You've got to get a Chris Reeve. You have to get the American made frame lock, you know, the original. So I bought that one. And then after this, I was very happy with the Lion Steel. And I said, this one's the one to get next. And that is the Viper Odino. Now the Odino was on my radar for probably about three years. And I just never jumped on it because it was $180. I'd heard a little bit of bad things about the Viper Adino and it having spotty um, action, detent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, to be fair, this one is absolutely perfect. Um, I am not selling this one. I actually was debating on buying a second titanium one, exactly like this, just to have two. Um, that's how much I like this. And for me, I ended up not doing that. Um, but I bought this one. I was so happy with the Italian craftsmanship on this. I bought this one. So after all of that, only a few weeks ago, I wanted to buy one of my dream knives. Whoop. One of my dream knives. And it was a Medford. And I said to myself, you know what? I, well, I can't really afford the Medford Praetorian, but I can afford the Medford Praetorian Slim. And I'm really messing up that finger flick. There we go, the thumb flick. And so I ended up picking up this one in the bronzed tumbled titanium with the S35VN steel. And I have to say, I am very happy with this knife. Um, the lockup on this is fantastic. Very smooth, very nice fidgety um, action here. And after that, I just said to myself, okay, look, you bought a $475 knife, you have a $260 knife, you have a $500 knife, you have pretty much reached where you want to go in your knife collecting. Are you going to go back down in price? Probably, yeah. Um, I might start saving up for one more Medford. Um, and then after that, I think I'm going to be pretty much done. Um, I've got my three, okay? Actually, my four, you know, I have my Chris Reeve, I have Medford, and then I have a pretty damn good Spider Co. I mean, for me, these are really the brands I've gone towards and really enjoy. So I have those three, and I have the fourth, but it's still in the mail, and that's going to be a surprise, but um, it is a bench made. And those four knives are really the ones that are the icing on the cake of my collection. So I thought you guys would enjoy this video and this open tag. I really wanted to just talk about where I started, 
where I've gone, where I've been, and how I've gotten here, and what my mental thought is on all that. So if you guys want to do this open tag, go on ahead. You by no means have to go 20 minutes. Um, I just had a lot of uh, time to cover here. And uh, for me personally, I'm just really happy that I'm at this stage in my collecting that I am able to have these things. But also I'm very happy to be able to share it with such an amazing community. You guys are simply amazing and I love all the comments you leave. So please leave a comment down below if you enjoyed this video and please hit that like button. It really helps the channel. It really does. So till the next one, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.